Hey guys! The two people that probably watch this. I'm just kidding. I'll listen to this. Um, yeah, I'm back with another podcast. My wife over here is, you know, wiping her wallet off because she decided to throw it in the cat bowl because our child was uh, taking off the uh, stickers off of our cabinet. <laughs> but anyway, so um, we're doing a podcast today because she. Um, would rather do podcast anyway. Um, she doesn't like showing her face on camera, so <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna try to redo this video that we're well. Technically, it's gonna be a podcast now, but we did a video um, talking about her growing up religious, um, but it didn't really go very well because I wasn't prepared. I had no questions, and it just kind of like went on for twenty years. Heard that. <laughs> um, it's a good mic field. <laughs> yeah, it is. So you can, uh, yeah. You you good? Any wallet? Yeah, I know. You done? Okay, that was loud. All right, so we're just gonna dive right in. So say hi to the peeps. Sup? That's it. Okay. Um, so that's my wife. She's wonderful over here. Can't I see am. her, obviously. Um, I'm so cute yeah. and adorable. Don't believe in the hype. I wanted to uh, have her do this with me. Um, More like forced. She was the one who kept telling me, write down the questions, babe, so we can do the podcast. I want to do the podcast. I should be in a butt. Because you would have kept bothering me. Oh my gosh, she's such a butt. Okay, so we're just going to dive right in. All right, so um, let's just get started. How old were you when you realized that you were gay? Like, what age did you kind of start having? Well, not gay, but bi. Probably eight. Okay, bi. Sorry, let me rephrase that. <laughs> So eight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oh, that was loud. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so what what was your first incident? <gasps> what? <laughs> what the hell? Is that him? Yeah. What kind of noise is that? It's so cute. Um, sorry. Our cat just made like a really cute noise and it, it, he doesn't do it a lot, so we got excited. Anyway, so <laughs> what was your first incident? Your first, you know. What does that mean? Your first, like, what, like what happened to make you realize, oh, I like females? Um, girls gone wild. And hocus pocus. I had a crush on Sarah Sanderson. Well... At least you're honest. Um, so, how old were you when you came out? As a bi, I was 15. Okay. And how old were you when you um, came out as a lesbian? <laughs> um, like 20. 20? Okay. Um, okay, so how old were you when you had your first relationship with a female? It wasn't really a relationship. Well, your first encounter with a female that was more than just friends. Oh, first encounter. Well, we were friends, but I was like experimenting with her. But she thought it was gross. Well, she's clearly straight. I don't know. I was like, I was really young. I wasn't even, I wasn't even 10 yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Early start. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't um, remember that age exactly. Yeah. Um, so when you came out, uh, how did your parents react? Um, I don't remember my dad's reaction. You don't? No. And my mom fainted. Oh, that's interesting. 
Um, turn this more towards you so I can hear you better. I'm a quiet talker, though. I know. Oh, okay. Um. So, how do you think that, um, how do you think that them being religious affected you? What does that mean? <laughs> like, how do you think, like, you being raised, like, in a religious household, like, how do you think that, like, how do you think it affected you? Like, negatively and or positively if, oh god, that was loud. Um, I don't think it was a positive thing. You don't think it was a positive? No, it didn't really. It was not really a positive reaction, like from my parents. With that, I don't know. Uh -oh. Well, I mean, like, how did did it affect you, like negatively in other ways? Like, not really. Like, not just based on your sexuality, but just um, that was really loud. But just um, you know in other aspects, just in life in general. Like, because, I mean, obviously homosexuality is not just one issue that they have. It's like, there's a bunch of other stuff that you're not uh, supposed I to do. I don't know. You're not supposed to cuss. You're not supposed to, like, be gay. Like, I don't know. But I do all that. <laughs> so. Oh, my God. Go away. Stop. Um. So. Okay. So you don't, so you think it affected you in a negative way then? Mainly. Okay. Um, so how do you, how do you, f oh, hold on. Do you, oh, I just skipped ahead, okay. Uh, do you still consider yourself a Christian? Or did you completely give that up? I don't know, I pray. But I don't read the Bible or anything, or go to church. Or do you, like, you know, walk in the faith? Or however they say it. It's your walk with God. Yeah, your walk with God with your faith and, and Jesus. But I don't know, but I, like, that movie had a good point that we saw last night. <laughs> like, you don't have to be religious to have faith. Yeah. So. No, I feel you. Like, I believe that God's real and all that stuff, but, like, like I talk to him sometimes, and sometimes I pray, but I'm not, like, deep into it like my mom or anything. Okay. Um, how do you feel about Christianity as a whole, though? And, like, people involved with it? Christians. I don't really think anything of it. It's just there. Like, everyone has their own religion. If you're Christian, cool. If you're atheist, cool. Like, I feel like anyone... There's so many opportunities and religions out there. You can just do or be whatever you want. I don't really think anything of it. Cool. Um, do you think that... Uh, do you think that religion, like, isn't the problem? It's the people that follow it that make it a problem like make it bad like because i don't think religions like i said before i don't, I don't think, think religions bad no religions aren't bad i mean it's not even just christianity like with being wicked and you can choose to um practice like darker magic there's like like good witches and bad witches so it's the same thing with like christianity yeah um my mom's one of the good ones <laughs> But there are really Christians that are just, they don't really let their kids or whatever do anything because they're really, really uptight with it. And they follow the Bible to a T, like really by the book. Yeah. And then you have the Christians that are like, they're Christian, but they still watch horror films. They still celebrate Halloween. So it's the people, it's not even like the religion. The religion, it can't be bad. Yeah. I just think that the Bible is just kind of like... I just think it's totally inaccurate because the thing is, like, people are still believing in things from thousands of years ago when the Bible was written by people that had really fucked up beliefs back in the day. So it's kind of weird that I, I... For me, I just find it weird that people still believe in that book. I don't understand it. Like, well, it's there, I mean, weird. there are things in the Bible that you can... It's kind of... It's a guideline. It's, you know... Yeah, I just think it's weird. Like, some of the things... Like, I don't remember everything in the Bible, but I know there's things, like... Well, yeah, if there's a, things, like... like you know, to forgive your brother 70 times 7 or 70 times 70, something like that, but, like, there's not, uh, everything in the Bible isn't bad. 
No, it's not. I just feel like it's a guidebook. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, there's, like, things like, what is it? Like, if a, if a woman, like, cheats on her husband or something, she gets, like, stoned to death. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why are we believing in this shit? Like, I don't. I don't think people but... believe in that women should be stoned, though. I know. I just, I don't understand it because I just feel like a lot of Christians, like, especially with the whole homosexuality thing, I feel like a lot, the one, not a lot of them, but the ones that are against it, I feel like they just pick and choose things from the Bible. Like, if you're going to believe in the Bible, believe in the whole thing. Well, don't, don't pick and choose. I don't want to stay out of the Bible for too long, but all I'm going to say is I think it's just a guidebook for people. Yeah. Um, just guidelines. It's like anything. There's guidelines on how to be wicked, and there's guidelines on, you know, people that are satanic. I mean, people pick and choose what they want. It's kind of like studying for a test. You kind of just do a quick read-through. And you pick and choose out of it what you think is going to help you, help you get through and stuff like that. So, it's the same thing. Yeah. I, I get that. Um, I think that's probably like the same thing. So, growing up and, like, now, um, what differences do you, uh, do you see with, like, religious people and non-religious people? Like, what are the big indicators? Like... I mean, you not not indicators because obviously specify. someone's like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian or I'm not Christian because you can't really tell by looking at someone if they're Christian or not. Like you can't tell unless someone says it. But when you like know that a person's Christian, then you know a person's not. Like or I would say, let me rephrase that. Say someone's religious and someone's not religious. What you know? What do you think are like? What do you think are the main differences between people like that? Like, about, like, how they act. Like, do you think that, like, like, is there I mean, things? I don't know, because my mom's Christian, but she, you know, still does things that, quote-unquote, people who are worldly do. So, I mean, I don't know. Unless you're, like, a really, like, by-the-book uptight Christian, which I haven't really ran into those, um, in a long time. I just feel like there's not really too many differences. I had one friend whose mom was really, really, really Christian, and she wasn't allowed to do anything other than go to school, come home, do Bible study. Like, she wasn't allowed to do much. But there's not, there, people aren't really like that anymore, and if they are, I don't know. Yeah. So, to me, there's not really a difference. My mom does anything that someone that wasn't religious does. Okay. Um... And then how is your relationship with your family now, um, like, after you came out as lesbian? Like, how do you, like, how do you think your relationship with them, I mean, I, there's other parts of the relationship, but I mean, like, how do you think your relationship with them, with that subject matter, is? I don't know, like, me and my dad, like, we're close, but when it comes to my sexuality, like, we're at odds with each other we don't really um get along when it comes to that i'm fine with him until he brings up like my sexuality <laughs> um so i don't know we're we're okay and then my mom she wasn't okay with it at first but she was like i'm her daughter and stuff so she's gonna love me regardless and i feel like she likes you so Oh, I hope so. And then my sister and brother, I don't, I don't really have a relationship with them. So. And I don't really, th I don't know. I mean, I don't, you don't, I mean, I don't know. If they did, you never told me, but I don't really know if they ever really like, voiced their opinion on it. I really don't think they care, to be honest. I just think they're just there. <laughs> they're just like, whatever. Oh, Grand Micah. Yeah, like, about your sexuality. I think they just don't really They just care, don't so care. They're just, I don't know, they're just, they just exist. Yeah just aloof um my aunt's pretty open like amy yeah, yeah. oh we, we call her aunt amy by the way if you guys are confused by that <laughs> that's our nick that's uh been a nickname for her since ashley was since born yeah. <laughs> she was like a little kid started calling her amy I so i gave we her my grandfather and my grandmother their names so pappy my grandfather nani's my grandma and then amy's my aunt yeah so we all just picked up on it and i call her amy and everybody and all that well because i gave them those names it's stuck so anyone that's in my life 
they become their, you know, Annie, Nani, and Pappy too. So, yep. Um. So, do you ever feel judged by being different? Like how? <laughs> when do you mean? Oh, I mean, just not even just being gay or just just oh, everything. Just well, yeah, everything. Because you are like completely the black rainbow. I'm sheep like of your the family, orange, so. black, and gray rainbow. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Like, just straying away from the whole gay thing, because that's not the only thing that I go through, but, um, yeah, I'm very different, especially, like, um, being into the alternative, darker side of life and my family. They're all, like, pretty predictable. They're... <laughs> very like normal to me like you know they all about health and working out and um they just do normal things like I'm wicked I'm into like witchcraft I'm into practicing spells and I like Halloween I like horror films I like everything that they're not about like the darker side of life I like dark things and I guess you would say they're more in the light yeah I don't know I guess they judge it because they all kind of are like, well, you need to be like us. You need to, you know, we wear this type of brand of shoe or we do this, we do that. And I'm, I'm like, I'm okay being me. So they're not very good with uh, accepting diversity. No. <laughs> I can see. Mm-mm. Like, I wear Vans. And they're like, what are, the, what are you wearing? You need to wear this. And I'm like, no, I'm okay. Like, I'm cool. I don't need to wear Nike. Thanks, though. <laughs> I don't know. And then my aunt, like, she doesn't like dark makeup or, like, you know, dark clothing. Like, she bought me jeans and I was looking at a black pair. And she was like, you know, it's okay. There's more to life than just wearing black. And I was like, no, there's not. I like wearing darker clothing. And she doesn't like when I wear dark makeup, dark clothes. Like, she just thinks it's weird. She thinks that it should be more bright and colorful. Yeah, I don't no. like to think about it. Literally, if you go through my clothes, it, and not everything's black, but everything's dark colors. Like literally, like a majority of my shirts, I would say, are black. If as I have fuck. anything colorful, I don't wear it. Like it's just, it's just there. Yeah. Half the time, I'm giving shit, and I just kind of toss it to my closet. Yeah. Like, I mean, I have black shirts with lots of color on them, but it's like rare that I have. They're more that. colorful than me, though. Yeah. But, like, literally, I have, I have, like, maybe, like, one pair of red jeans, like, two pairs of, like, purplish jeans, and then I have one denim jeans. It's, like, a light denim. That's it. That's it. But the rest of my jeans are black, so it's, like, I get it. Like, I love dressing dark, and everybody, like, knows that, so. But, um, yeah. So, do you think, um... So how do you feel when you f- when they say that stuff to you? Like, do you get aggravated or mm-hmm. upset or? I just feel misunderstood, I guess, but I get over it. Yeah. So I'm not gonna change myself for them. So, so what? Um. What was I gonna say? Um. So. What do you think is the biggest, like, or maybe, not the biggest, but maybe, like, they could be, like, more than one, but what do you think are, like, the big, um, things, I would say, I guess, that, um, cause you and your family to kind of have, like, bump heads, like, a lot? Like, it doesn't have to be one thing, it could be, like, multiple, but I'm just wondering, like, what are, like, what are the big things that you think stop you guys from having like a more deep relationship me i just don't want it well shit we just got deep here y'all why is that i don't know i like i think about it as are these people that i would want as a friend outside of family if they were just a stranger and they're not people that I would have as friends. Oh. So, even if you're my family, why would I want to hang out with you? Yeah. 
Do you ever feel bad for that? Or do you just not care? No, I'm kind of like I see them. Like, if I see them, I hug them and, you know, I love them, but I'm okay if we're not close. We don't have a relationship. I don't care. I'm content. They're content. They're living their lives and I live mine. Do you, um, does your mom ever, like, get you, like, try to get you to, like, do stuff now? Because I remember, I remember back then she used to no. do a bit more. My mom's kind of like, fuck it. So I'm done. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Girl. I have a relationship with my mom, and I'm okay with that. And my dad, we have more of a relationship than we did, but as for my siblings, it's kind of like when it's the holidays, we get together, we put up with each other, and then after that, everyone does their own thing. So, last question for this podcast. Um, how do you think that it... I write. Um, how do you think that it has made, like, how do you th- I, I didn't write this right. Uh, okay, basically, how do you think that, like, it's made you who you are today? Like, being raised with, being raised religious, or just being raised, you know, with your family in general? Like, how do you think it's affect like, well, made you... Well, it made me not want to be like them. I feel like I'm less judgmental. I'm more open-minded. I'm more understanding. I have more respect for people as a whole. Um, and I'm about giving people chances. Um, so I've done the complete opposite. Being around them and how they treated me and how they treated other family members, I knew I didn't want to be like that when I grew up so I just try to be the complete opposite and treat people with fairness kindness love and respect so yeah that's good though that's good as I I remember like you'd be really used when we first got together like for a while you were like really hurt by like not having a relationship with your family and stuff like that and I remember like you know you would try really hard and like you would even you try like with them with me like all the time like you'd always be like oh my god why can't you just like her like you know and I remember like even now like you're just like over it like with, even with that situation like you're just like over it you're just like okay. well, yeah, you're a jackass <laughs> you're being <laughs> I'm not gonna keep trying to like make them like you and I barely like you. Oh <laughs> man. Okay, well that's the end of this podcast, y'all. I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Interesting to find out some some deep issues on your life. There's not a deep issue. <laughs> I'm okay like living my life away from people. I mean if you're not okay with me and how I live mine. Like, you don't have to be a part of it. Bam. There you go, y'all. There's the mo- quote of the day. Model for life. That's <laughs> it. Right there. All right. Well, we're going to go. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, podcast and my wife's wonderful voice and her wonderful insight of religion. Um. So, yeah. I hope, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, like, subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Adios.